Hello, everybody, and welcome to Side Hustle to Freedom. Today, I am very excited to have with me Susan Schatzer. Welcome, Susan. Hi, thank you, Ben, so much for having me on the show today. It is. It is. here in Florida. Both you and I are in Florida together. Yeah, sometimes I like to pretend I'm in the Pacific Northwest, but yes, it is It is gorgeous outside of my cave here. Um, thank you so much for being with me. So, Susan, um, can you tell people a little bit about what you are up to in the world today to give uh, viewers some context? Sure, absolutely. So, um, somehow I became a 10-time number one international best-selling author. <laughs> I'm also known as the consciousness revolutionary. I'm sort of like Columbus, Christopher Columbus, and I'm like always exploring new territories and pushing the boundaries of what everybody else is, thinks is real, right, and relevant. Um, I'm the executive producer and host of the global TV series, Unlocking Your Limitless Life uh, with Susan Chatzer, and I have an extremely successful energetic coaching business. I work with people to eliminate you know, anything that's not working for them and to help them shift and change things um, in their life to have a different possibility. And I've been so fortunate to be able to collaborate with people like Deepak Chopra, uh, Marianne Williamson, uh, Dee Wallace, uh, Sheila Gillette from Ask Theo, um, Willie Robertson from Duck Dynasty, and um, Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank. And those are just like a couple people that I've had amazing conversations with. It's pretty incredible. So. I've just recently received an award at the uh, Business Accelerators Workshop, and um, I've been added as a faculty member for CEO clubs here in Orlando, Florida. So that's a little bit about me. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you for that. Um, I actually just saw Deepak Chopra speak a couple, a couple weeks ago, and um, he, was, he was amazing in person. Just a uh, guy, guy knows some things. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He has some... Um, He's been in a lot of places a lot of times and has a lot of experiences to pull from. Yes, uh, and as, as do you. So I'm going to dive into the many facets of what you just briefly introduced, and thank you for that concise introduction. But let's, let's go back in time. You, know, you weren't always uh, a TV host and an energetic healer as well as a best-selling author. So let's take a, a trip back in time to how you got to where you are, your, your superhero origin story, as it were. Yeah, thanks. So I'm originally from Massachusetts, and I moved here. Um, I got hired at Disney to be a Walt Disney World dancer. So it was a ton of fun getting here. Um, what happened was eight months after my son was born, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Um, that's one of those chronic illnesses where you don't actually get better from. It's like a progressive illness. Um, so right away, I was like on steroids and chemo and all that kind of stuff. And I was, I realized I was in an abusive marriage. And it was at that point that, you know, like my whole life just fell apart. Like here I have an eight month old. I'm like, you know, breastfeeding. They want me in for steroids. My closest family lives eight states away. You know, my husband at the time was like not at all having this. And, you know, it was, I'm incredibly grateful. Um, for him. And this is where everything changed for me. So before my son turned two, he walked. And there was so much judgment then that was placed on us with that. He and I both together, it was this deadbeat dad and how could you leave her until death do you part and sickness and in health and you know all that kind of stuff. So it was this, you know, you couldn't have a different possibility because everyone projected that on you. And society said, that's the way he is, you know, and, right. that's, and that's what you have now. And there was no other possibility. So it was a mentor of mine who asked me a question. And that question empowered me to have a different point of view. And that unlocked where I was and had shifted the energy into a state of gratitude, which actually raised my frequency. And all of these doors just blew wide open. It was incredible. And I thought, you know, if I can do this. I said, I can teach other people to do this. So I started to work with people who were in all different places, all different spaces in their lives. And literally through questioning, I empowered them to have a different possibility because truly hidden inside all of our problems, Ben, are our greatest possibilities. I love it. I love it. And for those that are listening that are like, what's she talking about? Frequency. Can you... Um, and I think it's like super important because I know, you know, we, we talk about energy and we talk about frequency. 
expound upon that a little bit, please? Yeah, so scientists have um, told us and have shown that the amount of energy that's here in the universe is the same amount of energy that was here when the universe was first created that everything is energy and you can't create energy or destroy energy, energy just gets transformed. So it's like when you take a log and you throw it on the fire, it turns into thermal energy and you no longer have that physical log. So it's like us, you know, we have our bodies right now and then when we don't, we just become energy without a body. So that energy is infinite, you know, it just kind of comes back and like retakes on a body again and has a new car to drive. So everything's energy. The food we eat, the technology we use, the clothing we wear is all energy. And energy has a consciousness. Every molecule has consciousness. So even though we're talking on a computer, um, there's still consciousness that has to do with that computer. And, you know, so many times, you know, in talking with people, I have this gift where I'm able to like slide into people's realities. And I'm able to see where that block came from or where that point of view originated from, whether it's now or it's in a past life or it was invoked on them or they picked it up or they bought it from someone. There's so many different ways that we get these things that limit us that truly it's uh, the frequency is where you are um, at your highest point. So the longer you can be at the highest point, what does that mean? That means that gratitude is the highest frequency just below, the first one below God consciousness. And that's the singularity of consciousness. And then anything below gratitude is lower vibrational frequency. So the more often and the longer that you can be in gratitude, literally that is going to bring you the highest vibration of relationships, business contacts, money flows, you know, career, anything you're looking for, being in the state of gratitude is the key piece. Uh, because when you're in gratitude, Ben, and you're in the frequency of that, you can't actually have judgment. It's right. not. And when you're in gratitude, you can't actually be, have anger, rage, fear, or hate. You know, you just can't have those either. Um, so that's what we take a look at when I work with people is like, where are you functioning? Where's your, where's your factor of gratitude kind of a thing? And what's not working for you? Let's get rid of that and then invoke and activate a higher frequency. So it, great results, dynamic results. It's incredible. And that's a little bit about frequency and how important it is to creating the life that you'd really like to have. Yes, I've totally noticed when I've been in a down state versus a more activated state, um, the different results that, that come into my life. So I totally resonate with what you're saying. So given the theme of this show, and I'll use myself as an avatar a few years ago, I was in a job that paid well, was secure, and I was thinking, oh, I'm not the entrepreneurial type. Um, how can I let go of these benefits? Uh, and I was also concerned about validation from my parents about doing something that they wouldn't necessarily approve of, specifically my dad. Yes. How do we think about that in terms of this frequency question? And then how do we work to then shift that when we feel stuck or we don't feel like this longing that we have makes sense? Cool. So can I facilitate with you? <laughs> Please. Okay, great. So um, you mentioned a couple of things. One is that um, you had all these benefits and, and, you know, money consistently coming in and that just, you know, that was a, a very comfortable place. Uh, but it's not where your true heart was. So right. you knew there was a different possibility. You just didn't know how to get there. Right? right. So what people say is either you're working here or you're an entrepreneur. Like, you know, it's one or the other. And a lot of people have that point of view. So if you do, I would ask you if that's a conclusion or is that actually a question? So anytime you're in a conclusion, a judgment, a calculation, a computation, any of those, you actually have prevented the universe, prevented God from giving you a different possibility because you've said that this is true, this is real, this is, this is what it is, and nothing else can get to you. So would you be willing, um, if you're in the same position that Ben was in and you have the opportunity, would you be willing to take a look at it's not one or the other? Would you be willing to have both? And if you're willing to have both, what would that like to look like? And you start asking questions like, okay, this is great where it is right now. I've got this awesome job. And how can I get better than this? 
And what that does is that is gratitude. You're grateful for what you have and you're asking for more to show up. So you're inviting it to come in. You're activating a new possibility. So that's one of the areas to kind of take a look at. The other area is uh, you had mentioned um, your family and you know how you were going to show up and how you would tell them. And there's a lot of people in that same um, place and space where they have you know, a spouse or coworkers or neighbors or people close to them that basically have judgments. <laughs> basically. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a judgment. And it's kind of like it's not what's in your best interest. It's what they think is in your best interest. Right. So what if uh, there was a possibility for you to cut, okay, the area where you're validating their reality? Because you're not actually creating yours, you're validating theirs. Right. Yeah. So what we can do is we can destroy and uncreate that. So all of the points of view that other people have for you, and this is a clearing statement that I use because everything's energy and words are energy. And what we think about, we talk about, what we talk about, we bring about because thoughts create things. Right. In knowing that, taking a look at when you start to think about what your parents are going to think and you start thinking about, you know, how they're going to act and their body language and their mannerisms and the judgment and how you're going to explain it, how you're going to make it right for them. Guess what you're creating? You're creating that because you're thinking about it. Exactly. So what if you had a different point of view? What if like, okay, cool. Like this works for me now until it does it. And then I can choose something else. Right? Like, Okay, so you have the job, and if you choose to, like, you know, just start something else, or you choose to do both things, it's like, okay, I'm going to give this a try, right? And trying is, like, one of the things, like, everybody is okay with, right? Because it's not, like, a de like you got to try to walk, you got to try to eat, you got to try to brush your teeth. Like, you, your parents have been with you your whole life. With, you've been trying a lot of things. You know, you try to get an A, and try to get a goal, and you try to get, <laughs> you know, two points on a basket, whatever it is. Um, so you just like kind of use the words that they can hear. They can right. hear the word try. They can't hear unemployment. <laughs> they can't hear I'm putting all of my college education to waste so I could go follow this. Like they can't hear that, but they can hear the word try. And um, so that kind of like eases people into it and be like, you know, because they would want to try. You know, dad, you know, wouldn't you want to try something if you knew that you had a possibility with it and it could actually bring you the greatest joy? You know, what if it's not actually what I'm doing now? Because, like, it's great, but it's not making me happy. Right. And, you know, I've achieved these things, but there's something else. So that is how I kind of work with people. Um, so, yeah, so let's go ahead and cut that. So everywhere you bought what your family taught, right, and everywhere you sold it to someone else, <laughs> <laughs> right so it's both ends of the scale and every time you've done that through all time space place dimensions realities and universes you know would you be willing to like you know give it up i'll speak for the audience yes <laughs> yeah. so what we do with that is when you acknowledge that that's something you're willing to let go of you're willing to give up like it no longer serves you right because it's really keeping you in a box like you're in what, um, what I like to call a no choice universe. Like you don't have choice with it because you can't, because this is what it is. This is the way it's always been. This is the way we've always done it. This is how it's supposed to be, ought to be, should be, might be, must be, all those kind of things. Let's like, you know, like throw that out and like be in the question and invite in and activate that which you'd like to have in your life. So taking a deep breath in to actually eliminate. So you're going to allow all of those things that were bought and sold and you sold and bought and taught and all that kind of stuff. We're going to allow that to drop out of your frequency. So taking a deep breath in and then out on three, one, two, three. Yeah. And you can feel it. You can feel it's like a wave and it just kind of like washes, you know, down and out. Um, because you are in charge of your life. You are in charge of your frequency. You do have choice. You do have the ability to shift and change. You know, out of, you took it on that fast. You can let it go that fast. You don't need the 25 years of, you know, therapy and the couch, <laughs> all that kind of stuff to, to change. So good. I don't, I don't have 25 years. So it's good to know. It's good to know. So that, that, 
begs another question. Let's say we, we, we let go of these um, parental stories and the stories that we've carried um, in our own head. Um, yeah. And then we, we're, we're in the entrepreneurial space and then this starts to get closer um, to where I am. And then we talk about like the, the money stories um, and, and that the value conversation. So oftentimes in the job conversation, it seems very kind of, it's a lot more black and white. It's like, okay, well, um, this is stable. I don't want to leave stability. Okay, I will try something else. I can side hustle. That's what I did. Um, then transition. And what um, I, I didn't realize was, was beginning in this entrepreneurial journey was this, this question of value and how that relates to money as well as that relating to that energy vibration. So I'm sure it's a similar process and it's probably similar stories there. So is it a similar way of just clearing those stories about value and worth as we um, work to get clients and charge clients and all of that? Yeah, so the, you're asking it's a combination of things. So one is absolutely we'll need to eliminate uh, the frequency of lack. Um, it's poverty consciousness um, that you have running in your system. And it's what you know, and, and even there are things that you're not even aware of. Right. Uh, you have. Yeah, that came in. So any point of view of, you know, money is dirty. Um, people you know, have I definitely, definitely had a theory growing up that um, you could make money or do good, but doing good and money didn't really always go hand in hand. Yes, um, that's one. Um, money is the root of all evil. Money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, people who have money have no friends. People who have money get it, you know, you have more people who can take it away from you and you're more at risk of being, um, you know, used and you can't have, you know, true friends. They just want you for your money. Um, those people are snobs. You know, literally there's like so much point, so many points of view about money that it takes a little bit. So what I do is we create a loop um, and a clearing loop. And then what happens is I have you run it um, at nighttime while you sleep. Uh, because that's when you can get out of your own way. Like right now, everyone is trying to figure out what I'm saying. Does it make sense? Does it apply to you? <laughs> right? And when I work with clients, you know, just like we're doing now, like I go to the, the subconscious, the unconsciousness that's there. And a lot of what I do when I'm clearing people said, well, what did you just say? And I'm like, exactly. Because <laughs> if you can't hear it, then that's the one for you. <laughs> and we clear it. And then activate. So can I give you um, one of the uh, sayings that I like to um, have my clients use to activate it? Could I give it to you and your audience? Please. Okay. Would you be willing to say, I have. I have. And we'll, we'll talk about the importance of that. More than enough money. More than enough money. And always. And always. Too much to spend. Too much to spend. Nice. I have. I have. Enough money. Always enough money. Or I have more than enough money. More than enough money. And always too much to spend. And always too much to spend. So a couple things that are key with that, that would be awesome for your audience to know about is one, when you say I am and I have, you're in the present and you're activating it right now. Anything that's future, you actually cannot have because it's always gonna be in your future. Right. So I will charge differently. I will do things differently or it's like, you know, I had it in the past. I did this before. I've done it already. Those are past and future. I am and I have are what you, this is, this is present because time isn't real anyways. It's a construct here on planet earth. It's how, you know, three dimensional reality sort of like kind of runs here. And yeah, we're still here and we're still, you know, Monday through Friday and weekends and 24 hours in a day kind of a thing. And until that changes, uh, we've got to play with the powers that be that are here like gravity. So taking a look at um, having more than enough money right now, right. And it's too much to spend. So people say, well, that's not true. Like I don't have more than enough money because I have all these other things. And I said, okay, well, let's take a look at it. So if you went to uh, McDonald's to get a burger for lunch, right? Do you have more than enough money to pay for your lunch? I'm like, well, sure. I'm like, okay, cool. And then always too much to spend. Do you still have some money left in your wallet? In your bank account they're like yeah I said then you have more than enough money 
and always too much to spend. So it's activating that and it grows because you're letting everything else go. And once it leaves your vibrational frequency, you, you actually have to choose against yourself. So do you know how that kind of works? Can I explain it? Go, go for it. Okay, so this is really fun. So you went, when you went to kindergarten, Ben, you were taught to count, right? So you went one, two, three, four, right? right. So you counted everything. Pennies, crayons, blocks, that kind of stuff. And you came home and you were so excited and you told everybody and everyone was so, yay, try it again, do some more. So then you went to first grade and they're like, yeah, okay, that, that's cool. You did that whole counting thing. Now we're going to teach you how to add. So two and two is four and five and five is 10 and 10 and 50, 50 is 100. Do you ever go back to counting? 78, 79, 80. No, you have to choose against yourself right? So with energy, you're actually working faster, quicker, and easier. And you know, the universe, our energy doesn't speak English, people. <laughs> energy has its own frequency. It has its own way of communicating with us. So kind of having a greater understanding of that actually benefits you. So having more than enough money and always too much to spend is one of the um, amazing things um, to have available to you as a tool in your toolbox. Yeah, so you can go ahead and, you know, move into the past or move into your languaging in the future and actually choose against yourself, or you can be more consciously aware and be present with what you're thinking about and what you're talking about so you can have a different reality. All right. I love it. I love it. So with this energy work that you do, how did you step into it? And how did it evolve in terms of your ability to, uh, for lack of better words, yield it? Yeah. Yield it. Yeah. It was one of those things where I, I was in conclusion with about my health and I was in conclusion about my marriage and the rest of my life and what was going to happen with everything. You know, like your whole life falls apart. And it was when my mentor asked me a question that started to shift and change things. And then I got the glimpse. I'm like, there is a different possibility available. I just don't know what that is. So I started researching everything, everywhere I could get my hands on with alternative means. And what I did was I spent a lot of time, like you know, three, four, or five years, doing a lot of my own clearing. So I would run, I would make my own, you can get GarageBand, which is for Macs, it's uh, an app. Um, right. you Right on your programming computer and it, it loops what you're saying and then you can run that at night while you sleep because literally when you're not awake actually more stuff can eliminate out of your field um, easily much more easily so I have clients and they when they come to my workshops and classes like they get the recording of it and I have them run that and it was incredible this one woman was telling me Ben about how she had this this event with like her whole family it was like a holiday thing and she had it running on low volume on her computer. <laughs> and everyone was, they were all, you know, kind to each other. And she couldn't believe it. She was astounded. And then literally like halfway through the meal, people started to like get upset and, you know, were like picking at each other, pushing each other's buttons. And she's like, what is going on? She went over the computer had run out of battery. <laughs> so she had to plug it back in and turn it back on. But yeah, so, um, yeah, it's energy, it works, it's pretty incredible. And you don't have to believe it, you don't have to understand it, you know, it just does. You know, it's like gravity, do you have to know why something falls down and hits the earth? No, it's just gravity. So it's okay. Just, it's just energy. So in other words, to, to reiterate, we can, we can tap into the power of our, our sub and unconscious um, by playing stuff and that's a lot easier to reprogram ourselves and that is the key to us accelerating faster where we wanna go. Yeah, and being consciously aware of what you're thinking and talking about. All right. What else do you think would be useful for, for those people that are, that are wanting that freedom that, that we haven't covered? Um, There's a key word. I'd like to that? share that be okay with you. There's a key word. Please. So the word want, W-A-N-T, was actually changed on us by the powers that be in 1946. So you can go back and look at dictionaries pre-1946 and post-1946. And for instance, now, what does the word want mean to us? Do you want to answer for your viewers, Ben? I'd say desire. Desire, right? Because you want to have it, right? 
what well, actually means lack. If you want something, you don't have it. Right. So in the dictionaries back then, there's like an entire column of definitions of words, of the word want. And the very last thing at the bottom is desire and have. Everything else is lack. Well, they flipped it. And then they started a uh, propaganda campaign initializing it within our vocabulary. So we really use it at an unconscious point right now. So it was, you know, what do you want to eat? What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to have for Christmas? What do you want for your birthday? You know, which clothes do you want to wear today? What outfit? You know, what do you, what do you want, want, want? And we actually say that unconsciously. And when you say that, because words have frequencies. So the universe is like, you're saying, I lack food. I lack clothing. I lack more money. If you want more money, I lack a relationship. I lack a career. I lack success. If you want success, do you flip everything that you're using the word want with and know that you're actually asking the universe for none of it? What words have frequencies? I mean, I, I could I could feel like words being infused with frequencies, but what you're saying is they have historical frequencies too. Yes. So mm -hmm. this, that happens to be one of our history's words that was created to actually work against us. Interesting. Interesting. So all the right. thing to use is I am and I have. I have more than enough money and always too much to spend. <laughs> Yes. No, I mean, th that, that makes sense, um, you know, going back to what you were saying earlier. Um, but I guess, yeah, the, the want creates that gap between you actually having it and it, it not being there. Yeah, Interesting. because that's the future. If you want, you don't have it. It's always the future. So when you're always wanting something, you can never have it because it's always coming to you in the future. All right. Well, I think that's that's a good place to to land the plane for for this for this first time we checked. So I think there's there's more stuff to dive into, but uh, that, that's good to cover for our our, our side hustle to freedom, folks. Um, so do you have a free gift for our audience? I do absolutely. So part of what I do is um, helping people attain the global visibility that they'd like to have. Um, so my team has put together a list of 12 totally free. We're giving them to you free, and they're also free resources uh, that you can use that are going to support you in a lot of different areas in freeing yourself up with more time, actually uh, being able to access uh, other possibilities that are out there for you with your business, with moving forward. And we have them listed for you, and we have the links right there. So it's a quick and easy, like, click and go. And uh, we made it as as fun and as easy as possible because we know you're in the side hustle and you want to ditch the 95 and you want to have the life that you'd really like to have. So what if this is a part of contributing to you and Ben, thank you uh, for creating the summit for all of us and your mission with your message for the future. Yes. Thank you for, for offering all those resources. Very much appreciated. And thank you much for your time, wisdom, and energy, Susan. Thank you. Thank you so much. You all have a great day.